the next lecture uh, for you. Uh, okay, now, now the second lecture is just to answer your question. Only. <laughs> Коллеги, Марко просто спешит на самолет, поэтому он свои две лекции сразу прочитает, чтобы мы могли... Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. I don't know if you need some minutes of rest after the first one. Are you okay? Can I go ahead? Good, okay. So I changed a little bit the title. Uh, sorry, Natalia. But I mean, uh, you know that we are in a big competition with the international guideline and European guideline. And I know that the title international means the guideline there are in the world, not the, the IAP, but still, I mean, uh, uh, this title is provocative, international or European, because actually there are on, not only two, but that's, I think, I should recommend you, I will try to convince you today that the European are better, but still, eventually, if you really doesn't like them, use the international, but don't use the other one. And I will show you why now during my presentation. Maybe. Yeah. So what we have uh, uh, today are three guidelines, major guidelines. There are, there are more than, uh, I think now I've made. Okay, we have uh, three major guidelines. The European guideline on cystic tumor of the pancreas, which we call, I think, correctly as per consensus statement, because there is no evidence basically in this topic at all. The International Consensus Guideline of 2012 and the AGA, American Gastrological Association Guideline, that were recently published. Actually, I suggest you to don't follow the American Guideline. And actually, the American agree on that, mostly of the American. I want to just show you something very unpolite. The Italians are unpolite. Uh, this is, uh, they are the authors of the AGA Guideline. So the first author published around the 70 publication, around the 25 in pancreas, and pancreas is, I think, something like three or four. The second author published three papers in his life, nothing on pancreas. The fourth author published, I think, something around 30 publication, of which 15 in pancreas, no one in pancreatic cystic lesion. Finally, the fourth published a lot of paper, no one in pancreas. Those guidelines, in my opinion, sorry if I'm unpolite, are dictated by insurance company to prevent the follow-up of cystic lesion and to save money. So, don't follow those guidelines. And on that, I think that even two people in competition, like me and Tanaka, agree very much. So the last time I met him in, in, uh, in Sao Paulo, we spoke together for the first time as a friend just against the AGA guidelines. So we found a very common uh, point. Now that we state that, we'll see why we should not follow the American uh, uh, guideline. So what we say in the European guideline as well in the uh, international guideline is main dot IPMN is associated with the high risk of cancer. So all patients with IP, main dot IPMN or involvement of the main dot of the IPMN should be resected, of course, if they are fit for surgery. Which kind of surgery should we do? Of course, radical surgery. This is a patient until we have not histology, which is negative, with potentially cancer. The problem is not when you have a when involvement of the dot just partially, then you do, of course, a Whipple here, frozen section, you see what is the dot and so on. But when the dot is all dilated, the attitude in the past was to do a total pancreatectomy always. Now, basically, we doesn't recommend anymore because most of those cases has just IPMN in the head and they have a dilatation of the dot because the IPMN of the head, because of the mucus or a solid component, but not IPMN in all the gland. So they, generally what we do is a Whipple even here, we send the frozen section, the frozen section is negative, or we will see which characteristics. We stop the operation with the Whipple. Of course, if there is, for example, high grade dysplasia IPMN in the frozen section, then we complete the resection or we extend the resection. But what the European guideline told even differently from the uh, Sendai criteria is the frozen section on primary tumor if we think that the IPMN in the head is cancer IPMN. Why that? Because the problem is how to extend the resection make sense if you have a benign disease or premalignant disease and you want to prevent cancer. But if you already has a cancer, the cancer will drive prognosis of this patient. So if you leave a medium grade dysplasia in this patient and he has already a cancer here, nothing happens. Why you should take it out all the pancreas when you can save half, make him live in better for the few years that remain to live because he has a pancreatic cancer. So 
First and sexual primary tumor when you have suspicion of a malignant IPMN before to decide regarding the extension of the resection. Here's the typical example. Main that IPMN malignified with a solid component in the head. The frozen section was showing that it was pancreatic cancer here, or if you want IPMN cancer. Medium grade dysplasia on the resection margin. I didn't complete the pancreatectomy. I just leave like this and because the patient will die of recurrence of cancer before to die for the uh, progression of IPMN in the remnant. So what we do basically following the guideline, the European guideline is the follow. If we have not cancer, if we are just IPMN, resection, you do a frozen section of the resection margin, and then you decide according with the grade of displacement that you found in the resection margin. So if the resection margin is negative, no IPMN, the operation is finished. You have low-grade dysplasia, there are no indication to extend the resection because the time of progression of low-grade dysplasia actually is very long, generally longer than the life of the patient. The general is a 70, 68-year-old patient. Medium-grade dysplasia IPMN, debatable. We should decide on the basis of the patient, I think. In our European guideline, we say we suggest to extend the resection. I personally adjust this uh, treatment to the patient. What I mean is that if I have a 78-year-old person, I don't extend resection. If I have a young patient, I extend resection. So I think this is probably, we are now working on the review, uh, review the European guideline. I think the personalized treatment for cystic lesion is a very important concept. We should try to adjust the indication on the kind of patient we have. I agree dysplasia, in contrast, if you have not IPMN cancer, is a indication to extend the resection of pancreatic surgery. <coughs> and finally, this is very clear from the first uh, guideline were published uh, in 2006, uh, when you have the nodded duct, so duct without epithelium, you should consider positive because this could be a typical effect of pressure of mucus on the epithelium and you can't exclude malignant cells, so you need to go ahead. The problem is what happens here. So what we know today is that we have a frozen section. We know which is the histological situation here. But how could, be, how could we be sure that there are no skip lesion of cancer or high-grade dysplasia distally to the frozen section? This is actually a big problem. So this is not guideline. This is the approach we are doing at Karolinska. So what we are doing in those patients is intraoperative pancreatoscopy. So we cut the pancreas. We send the frozen section, which, of course, drive us if it's positive or negative, but then we check the duct from inside. So we have now a feasibility and safety study ongoing, basically completed, that show very nice results. The second step will be to have a more accurate, even histological evaluation of the duct during the, uh, inside to the remnants uh, before to do the anastomosis. That's in order to try to really personalize the extension or resection based on imaging and histology, or uh, in all the pancreatic deaths. But again, this is a study, not guidelines, so that's just to show you how we try to overcome this problem. Who is right? Tanaka on European. So European guidelines say that main dot dilatation over six millimeter is an indication for surgery, and uh, Tanaka say 10 millimeter. Actually, my friends from Germany published recently in Annals of Surgery, and uh, we were very happy to make a nice comment on this paper. A very nice paper, consecutive to 320 patients with main duct pancreatic involvement, and they went to operation. They showed that from five to nine millimeter of dilatation, you already have 60% of cancer. So main dilatation is a really big prognostic factor. 10 centimeters is too much to wait. I think this guideline are by this study, of course, validated, and they should be stressed that, I mean, six millimeter is start to be a quite significant dilatation. It's not normal dilatation of the pancreatic duct. So main duct APMN, very high risk of cancer, six millimeter. I would strongly recommend to follow the European guideline and go to surgery. More complicated is the situation regarding branch duct IPMN. Here you see the flow chart of the European guideline. Probably you know the one of the international as well. The first things I should say is that the European are much easier, as you can see here, are made to be easy. And uh, what we say in principle is that when you have a patient with branch duct IPMN, go to surgery if it's symptomatic. And this is a crucial point that I think we should also discuss and review accurately during the next revision of European guideline, what means symptomatic patient. Actually, of course, John this, but that is quite clear. 
pancreatitis, which kind? Subclinical pancreatitis, very small light pancreatitis, that sometimes is pancreatitis, are other kind of abdominal pain. So definition of symptoms can be very dangerous and very difficult to state. I had uh, uh, three days ago an outpatient clinic and I had two patients with this problem of potentially symptomatic APMM, but really not sure. So the fine symptom is very difficult, but still, if they are clearly correlated to, to IPMN, surgery is always indicated. Regarding dimension, we state, and this is also something new and different from the uh, international guideline, and I have to tell you, it's going to be published very soon, a paper from Hopkins with a very large series that validate again the European guideline, in which they state clearly that four centimeter is more accurate margin than three centimeter. But anyway, that will come very soon in literature. So we can say that four centimeter, over four centimeter surgery, under four centimeter surgery only in patient with risk factor. And I will show you what I mean for risk factor in a while. What really is different from uh, international guideline, the European guideline, the follow-up uh, protocol. So basically what we do in the European guideline is the first year of follow-up, we do a scan, generally MR or endoscopic ultrasound every six months. Then from year two to year five, independently by the dimension, one examination per year. Instead, too many examination actually in the international guideline. Then, after five years, we increase again the frequency of the follow-up at six months. That was made only on expert opinion statement, but we start to have data supporting that. I will show you in a while. Here we are going to see the risk factor I told you before that are indication for surgery, absolute indication symptoms related to the pancreas, Mural nodules, dilatation of the main pancreatic duct over six millimeter, relative indication rapidly increase in size and elevated le level of CA99. Yeah. You see here a typical example, small main data PMN but solid component. In this case, we underwent enucleation and there were two lesions, also another in the tail with the solid component. So we did distal resection plus enucleation of this one in the head you can see here the bile duct uh, and the portal vein, so it was in the posterior side of the pancreas, quite, uh, quite I have to say, in a bad position. So another problem is, uh, you know, to be too much intellectual sometimes, to make a guideline difficult, I think it, it's, it's another problem. So this is what the international guidelines say. CT, and also I disagree because a lot of radiation during the life, or MR, when the cyst is more than one centimeter. So for the international guideline, this is five millimeters should not be followed. Should be followed for the European guideline. This CT scan is through 2010. 2012, stable disease, five millimeter. So completely the same. But 2015, IPMN cancer mixed type. So according with the international guideline, this patient should not be followed according with the European should be followed. Of course, cystic lesion can be two, three, four, five millimeter, two centimeter, three centimeter. Everything when born is small, even children, and then they become adults. Same is with IPMN. What's the problem if there is five millimeter, seven millimeter, 10 millimeter? Of course, there will be a moment of start and there will be then some time a progression. The outcome of surveillance for IPMN, if you look here, look in literature, can be a little bit confusing. There are very confusing results. You see, I mean, the incidence, for example, or patient, of patient underwent surgery and the percentage or high grade dysplasia and basic cancer in those patients is very different, from 100% to 0%. Why? Because during the time, the indication for cystic lesion, for surgery for cystic lesion, are dramatically changed. So we try now to analyze this cohort of patients. We basically uh, ended Karolinska and we basically follow according with the European guideline. So here you see in 395 patients that went follow up for not surgical IPMN, so patient without indication for surgery, you can see that the specific survival for IPMN is excellent following the European guideline. And the IPMN related mortality was 1%. So still, even using the guideline, even following the patient, there is a risk that the patient die for IPMN cancer. But this, I challenge you, this risk is not definitely higher than the risk for surgery. So the alternative was to operate the patient. And if you doesn't do a total pancreatectomy, you doesn't treat the disease because it's generally multifocal disease. So still need the follow-up. So basically the follow-up, when you follow guideline, is safe 
effective and the patient has really very small risk. And I think this data will improve because grade line will improve, but also radiology and this method will improve during the time. However, and I come back now to another crucial point, those lesions have a tendency to progress constantly during the time. This is the overall progression rate of, the, sorry, this is not surgery. This is a risk for progression. So this is the progression rates of those lesions. In many times, progression means anything. A few millimeter are just bigger. Sometimes means what is a feature. Sometimes, so this is the overall one, but still they progress during the time. It doesn't stop to progress. And very interesting, you can see here, the risk of progression in our series was very much correlated to two aspects. One is the prominence of main pancreatic duct, which makes sense because that means probably another disease, so mixed type EPMN, but also location in the head of the pancreas. And we come back to the article I mentioned before in the first slides, and I told you, take in mind this article. How are they that supported that when the lesions are in the head, there is probably higher risk of progression. There are no guidelines speaking about that. Probably in the revision, we need to take care of the few data we have, but at least we need to mention because that could be another maybe slightly low risk factor. Finally, the risk for surgery, this is also increased over the time and reach a plateau after seven years. This is interesting and probably reflect even that after seven years, some of those patients probably reach the level of surgery, but they are not anymore fit for surgery. Very interesting, this court of patient is now under investigation from us to try to understand this data. What also is interesting is when we look histology, of those patients under wet resection during the follow-up. The histology is very good. What I mean is that they, are, they have really indication. When you look histology for IPMN generally, most of them are error. Medium grade dysplasia, low grade dysplasia, but when they are operated after initial follow-up, almost all of them have clear indication. So you are able even to select better surgical candidate following those patients. So again, international guideline, as I told you, say uh, no, uh, no uh, follow-up for cis five millimeter cystic lesion. This is not the same case, it's another. Eh? It's very similar, but it's another. Europeans say, yes, we need to follow. Lesion stable, AGA guidelines say, if there is no progression after five years, we should stop to follow the patient because the insurance won't don't pay the follow-up. That's the real truth. European guidelines say, no, we go ahead even with more follow-up. And this patient again, develop IPMN and cancer. So. The follow-up should be prolonged as much the patient is fit for surgery. And secondly, I, couldn't, I have no evidence that should be more frequent after five years. This is what we are doing, we suggest, but of course the evidence is quite not strong. But still, I mean, every cystic lesion detected should be also followed. So the dimension at the beginning is not really relevant. Very interesting is that also when you have, this is a group of patients underwent follow-up because as a general contraindication to surgery, but theoretical indication, the survival is quite good. So those patients live quite long, even if they had indication for surgery. Another important issue is how to follow patient after resection for IPMN. So we know that there is a risk of recurrence when you resect an IPMN in the remnant. The problem is the literature doesn't show so many data. So what we did inside the European study group on cystic tumor of the pancreas, with a big consortium that you can see here involving many European centers, but also a couple of American centers. And we collected 1,700 consecutive patients that went pancreatectomy for IPMM. You can see here the basic characteristic of those patients. Uh, here is the histology. As I told you, only 45 of those patients has invasive cancer. The other has not invasive IPMN. And the overall rate of recurrence, including every kind of recurrence, was 15.7%, including even, as you see, metastasis. So recurrence here, we put together in these slides every kind of recurrence for cancer IPMN, for recurrence as an IPMN in the remnant, and so on. But when we look at the progress progression rate in the remnant, it's very interesting to see that the malignant lesions were associated with the highest uh, progression risk compared to the benign one. Rate of reoperation was 3.5%, but was increasing during the time. So even in those patients underwent surgery for IPMN, the risk to need another surgery is increasing over the time. And very interesting, we found that mixed type IPMN were associated with significantly higher risk for recurrence compared to main duct and branch duct IPMN. And the pancreatic obiliary histotype was a risk factor for recurrence compared to the other histotype. And finally, of course, a positive margin was a positive predictive factor 
in order to have progression after resection. So even here, in the guideline, we say that those patients should be followed with an MR every year after resection. I think we need to personalize the follow-up according with those new results when we write the new guidelines, or at least the revision of the guideline. There is another important question. The uh, international guideline mentioned, there is a chapter when they mentioned that a patient that underwent uh, are detected with FMN potentially could have a risk for other malignancies, in particular colonic cancer. And so they doesn't recommend the screening for that, but they mentioned that, I mean, that could be something that could be done eventually according with the local habitude, because there are reports that say that there is an increased risk. Actually, it's true. This is, again, another Pancreas 2000 study we did together, even with my friend Gural, uh, in which we analyzed literature, and we found the very confusing data on prevalence of extrapancreatic neoplasma in IPMN patients. Some studies say, yes, there is an increased prevalence. Some studies say, yes, no, there is not. Of course, there is an increased prevalence. Prevalence is a bias, because if you have a patient with colonic cancer, the patient with colonic cancer needs to do a CT scan for staging and for follow-up. But then, having IPMN and high prevalence, you detect asymptomatic IPMN incidentally. That doesn't mean that the other part of the population has not IPMN, but that means that you doesn't check them. So of course, you found an highest incidence. That's why we decided to do an incident study. Also, I have to say, very well published. And we found there was not difference in incidence of extrapancreatic malignancy in IPMN. So, IPMN patient doesn't need follow-up for extrapancreatic malignancy. As I showed you before, IPMN uh, uh, maybe should be looked more carefully in patients with familiar risk, because we know that they are a phenotypic expression. We know that they have the same rate of progression, but we know also they're associated with a definitely higher rate of pancreatic cancer compared to sporadic IPMN. So you have a patient with familiar pancreatic cancer history, IPMN, be a little bit more careful and probably even more liberal if the patient is very fit and motivated to go to surgery. MCN, you saw this picture before, that was a real revolution. So what we basically state in the European guideline uh, in contrast with the international guideline was not to operate every MCN, but when you are not sure with the diagnosis. And that happens many times. Uh, you saw before the picture, when the lesions are quite small, it's very difficult to differentiate MCN by an APMN or by a serous adenoma. So instead to do surgery for nothing, probably you can wait a little bit. And what we state is that when the lesion is less than four centimeter and you have not clear diagnosis, you could safely follow those lesions and then go to surgery only when they reach the level of four centimeter. You already saw before in this review we made that, I mean, the risk for cancer or for malignancy in MCN less than four centimeters is 0.03%, and no one of those developed cancer has not worrisome feature. So four centimeters without worrisome feature, basically the risk is zero. Zero doesn't exist, but still, I mean, very close to zero. So much less than the risk you have with surgery. Serous adenoma, the European guideline stated uh, uh, some uh, indication. So stated that the lesion over six centimeter localized in the head or symptomatic should be resected. When you have a no clear diagnosis and differential diagnosis with malignancy should be resected and the other should be followed. I think this chapter will change completely in the new guidelines because I think that the only indication when you have a clear diagnosis of LCM, that's the point. For surgery is when the lesion becomes symptomatic or dangerous. For example, in the head, I think uh, who is operating pancreas know very well. One of the points that the big uh, serous adenoma give could be problem on the portal vein. Portal hypertension, portal thrombosis can become very difficult to resect, sometimes needed even vein resection because they generally have uh, inflammation around the cyst. So in those patients, probably surgery if the patient's feet is recommended when you have a core jaundice or cholestasis. In the other case, we can just uh, completely forget because after this study we did, again, I, I repeat, in, in the European study group and APC and IAP, the risk for malignancy in SPN is basically not significant, so it's a benign disease. Finally, SPN, we already told before, this can be a pediatric disease, big tumors, very good prognosis, so they should be resetted always, even including locally advanced lesion. So in conclusion, I just try to resume. Basically, the spectrum of, serious, of, of cystic lesion is big. The European guideline are the only one existing collecting all the more frequent cystic lesion and giving advices for that. This table you can find on the European guideline. 
By principle, we can say that serious adenoma is a benign disease and basically surgery is not really recommended, but when it's recommended, you can do sparing parenchyma surgery. The MCM resection, yes, is indicated if you are sure about diagnosis, but you can follow if you're not sure until they are four centimeter. In benign, you can do sparing uh, uh, resection. Frozen section is not mandatory, it's a single, unique lesion. Branch duct surgery is very, very few cases needed. Generally, follow-up is needed. Sometimes, sparing surgery can be done. Frozen section is always mandatory, and the follow-up is always mandatory, as well in main data IPMN. And finally, SPN should be always resected, and the follow-up is needed, because even if you have metastasis in the malignant one, resection of metastasis has generally very great results. Very many question mark remains regarding the medical treatment of malignant uh, um, cystic lesion of the pancreas. And that's, I think, is one of the area we need to investigate, in particular, malignant IPMN, and eventually even locally advanced and the one treatment or not, as we discussed it before. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Marco. Some questions, please. It was enough uh, the length of the answer. <laughs> Professor Yegorov, Moskva. Thank you very much for, uh, for nice talk. And, uh, but uh, I still have a question <laughs> about the uh, European recommendation yeah. or international. Uh, you know that uh, there are some, some reports from Heidelberg about the um, Invasive cancer from BDIPMN yeah. uh, of less than two centimeters. Yeah. And uh, my question is, uh, how is uh, what what is decision making? Uh, did you take in consideration uh, such kind of reports, uh, making decision about uh, the four centimeters limit? Yes, this is a very uh, difficult question. Well, it's not difficult, but I mean, it's difficult to answer. But the, the, point, not, the point is this one, I, I have to tell you. I, I had a patient with two centimeter malignant branch that IPMN. What I can tell you is that, uh, in my opinion, dimensions are not really very relevant. This is my personal view. It can be also six centimeter. The problem are the words on feature. So when you have a lesion which is ugly, radiologically, so I mean solid components, something like this, it doesn't matter the dimension, I will take it out. Eventually, we start with the nucleation to be sure if it's very small like the one I show you, frozen section, see what is it, and so on. But, I mean, without any worries on feature, to have an IPM and cancer, I never saw that. I never saw, actually, in two centimeter or three. I never saw in four. I saw once in six that was not worries on feature and there was a small cancer in situ in the world. So, I mean, what I mean, and, and the data we have in this, 500 patients I showed you before, they show that basically the risk to develop malignancy inside your follow-up program is very low. It's 1%, yes, of course, 1% is not nothing. But risk for surgery is at least 1%. And you have a sequence. So I will not recommend to operate all those lesions, even because if you think about 20% of population, I think it's impossible. But also I think it's really dangerous. So, they, they talk about I know very well. I discussed with them many times, but there is only one center in the world has these results, which is Heidelberg. All the other has basically those results. So, so. I don't know, but I mean, I, I can't, uh, and of course we need to take in consideration, even in the guideline we'll take in consideration, we'll say that there is a report completely different from all the other reports. So we need to be careful in particular to some suspicion, symptoms, worries on feature, even in small uh, PMN. But, the majority of reports are completely in the other direction, so. Thank you very much. And the next question is, yeah. uh, when we have to stop uh, observation, I mean follow-up, eh. after, eh. after five years of, of, of no changes? No. No, you, I show you the case, but I mean, this is, this is quite, this is one of the, of the news why me and Tanaka, we became so friends. Because, uh, because basically, this is what the AGA guideline say, and I think there is completely not evidence. It's based on insurance problem. The point is that I think the follow-up should be done until the patient is fit for surgery. At the same time, we need to work all together to define factor and to define sign uh, markers, wherever you want, that can predict 
which one will develop cancer and which one not, and then stop to follow the one that doesn't need. But at the moment, we have not clue, we have not information, we have no knowledge who of those patients will progress to cancer. So until the patient is fit for surgical program, I would never suggest to stop the follow-up. Thank you very much. All right, all right. Спасибо, Марк. Такой вопрос. Вы говорили, что в необходимых случаях, в определенных случаях, нужно расширять операцию при диагнозе IPM. Вот что это за случай и до какого уровня расширять операцию? До уровня тотальной панкреатектомии? Um. Generally, uh, so for branch data IPMN, of course, I don't recommend the total pancreatectomy. For main data IPMN, uh, I recommend uh, uh, to start with a limited resection, doing a frozen section, because many times you see all the duct dilated, but actually the problem is that there is an obstruction in the head related to mucus, related to solid components, and it's not a disease of all the ducts. So before to take it out all the pancreas, I prefer to know what is it in the frozen section, and then, of course, if there is high-grade dysplasia IPMN, medium-grade dysplasia IPMN, then extend the resection. But many times it's just low-grade dysplasia or nothing, and then you save half pancreas, you prevent brittle diabetes. So, in my opinion, we need to do less and less and less total pancreatectomy for IPMN than in the past. Thank you. Marco, just one question regarding also this. I mean, I... I I actually do exactly like you just presented here, but, but again, listening to your wonderful talks all the time, I, I doubt because, I mean, <clears throat> when we are talking about five millimeters, six millimeters, yeah. with 60 to 70% yeah. risk of malignancy, then I say, I mean, it's, 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 then we should go for total or because, I mean, there is no, a no, systemic... No, 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 six, six uh, millimeter was the main pancreatic. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, but, but, but still, I mean, this is, this is maybe the, the, the diameter of the highest of, of the widest yeah. area and it's yeah. but, but still I think I think that IPMN is some kind of a systematic disease of the pancreas yeah. Yeah. and it's not a local disease yeah. of the pancreas as we have let's say in pancreatic yeah. cancer. I agree with you there is a problem uh, so I think really IPMN represent biologically and uh, not only biologically, I can also give you this example uh, for uh, surgery. It's like a polyp in the colon. So if you have a patient that develop colonic cancer, basically, use, you, for example, uh, colonic cancer in the second, you do a right side hemicolectomy, right? And then you recommend him to do control with colonoscopy because you have risk that he will develop other polyps in the remnant of the, of the colon and cancer, correct? It would be the same to say, okay, I know that this disease can affect all the colon, I do a total colectomy. It's just something we are not doing. And I think APMN basically is the same because it's true what you say. And if you see our data even recurrence in the pancreas remnant, basically the risk of recurrence is increasing over the time. But then 3% of patients need surgery again. So all the other 97, you save half of the pancreas. My friend, the comparison was not good because, I mean, you're, you're comparing the uh, adenoma of the polyps when you would have an FAP patient, then I would say you are right. No. But, but the problem is the rest of the colon is completely yeah. healthy. I, dis but, but here... I disagree. I disagree. I think IPMN are sporadic colonic cancer. They still, I mean, increase your risk to have other polyps. Familial uh, adenomatous polyposis is like familiar cancer with IPMN. Then I will do a total, I agree with you. But that's another risk uh, group, uh, group of risk. I mean, if you look at the data, I mean, doing conservative surgery, basically, you doesn't basically never need to do surgery again. 3% is nothing. I mean, it's very low. And that 1,700 patients eh, in different institutions. So it's not only the attitude of Karolinska, the attitude of, uh, so there is inside Verona, Hopkins, you. So maybe I, only you are this 3%. <laughs> I'm joking. Thank you. Uh, question is over. Thank you very much. Uh, next.